We all know that hair cloning is the great hope for the future. We want to definitively beat baldness. You are the executive director of Adaran's Research Institute, Dr. Kavashnik. You have the floor. Talk to us now about the research and advances today in cloning. So, I would like to discuss, as Mr. Menetri said, the work we're doing on what people call hair cloning and to try to give you some idea of tomorrow's treatments. This meeting is about research and solutions. So, I'll talk about something that is not yet ready but is already in clinical trials in the United States. They are FDA-approved trials that we are currently doing. Okay, so we're going to talk about what is best described as cell-based hair transplant, so transplanting cells, not follicles. You know, from all the talks you've had, from a medical standpoint, from physicians, we could do medication, we could do surgery, and now I want to talk to you about the next way, biotechnology. This is laboratory research that is being translated into the clinic. Specifically, our goal is to be able to inject hair-forming cells from the scalp that will result in grow hair growing where you had already lost hair before. So that's the goal of everything I will describe. This fits very nicely into the evolution of hair integration. We start with a large skin graft, four millimeter plugs. You see this on the left of the picture above. We moved hair, but it didn't look the way we wanted. Next, today, we talked about moving follicles, follicular unit transplantation, follicle by follicle. Now today, tonight, we talked about moving cells, the basis of the makeup of the individual hair follicle. And specifically, we only want to do this if we can multiply these cells. The purpose of this is to make more hair seeds than you started with. Because right now, if you've lost a lot of hair, we cannot fill all of it, only parts of it. So our goal is to take advantage of the regenerative ability we know a hair follicle can completely regenerate itself. Professor Sten is our chief scientific officer. He has written and published about this regenerative capability of hair. We know that every day your hair falls out. You see it in the shower, in your brush, but it grows back. It comes back. Also, if you pluck a hair, if you pluck an eyebrow, it grows back. So we know that these cells here are left behind after you take out the hair. Those cells create an entirely new hair. So the cells we talk about are the dermal cells, the cells at the very bottom of the hair follicle. These cells induce the formation of the hair follicle. These cells, the epidermal cells, are the ones that form the hair follicle itself by the induction of the dermal cells. So, our goal is to do the same thing that we've seen where the hair develops in the skin of a human. The skin starts off flat, then the epidermal cells pock and leave you with a hair. So this is the same thing we try to do in the lab. We take some skin that has hair on it, we separate the cells in the laboratory, then we put the cells back into the skin as hair seeds. This essay is something we published in the Journal of Investigative Dermatology in 2005. It's an essay used around the world by researchers, both in universities and industry. And it shows that when you inject these cells into the skin, it will allow the cells to find each other and you can generate groups of hair. You see the roots of hair on the outside growing in, on both sides. We see this in less than two weeks. A clear drop of cells turns into a group of hairs. This is the mechanism. You inject the cells, the dermal cells in orange find each other, 
The epidermal cells in yellow find each other. It's called homodermic aggregation. This like finds light. And then these dermal cells cause the epidermal cells to form a brand new hair. So this, as I said, is just the way it happens in life, naturally, when hairs develop. Flat skin is induced by the dermal cells to form a natural hair. This is naturally in our system. But nobody wants a ball of hair. We have to have hair coming out like this, in the right angle and right direction to be useful. So we used a different model. In this model, we take scalp hair, so skin with hair on it, donated by men having a hair transplant. We grow the cells, the hair seeds, and then we take facial skin from ladies having a facelift, and they donate the skin. We inject the cells, and we can find where the cells go. What they do is they grow here, on this facial skin, and this hair all comes out at the right angle and direction on facial skin that did not have noticeable hair growth before. So, based on this background, we are now in the clinic doing clinical trials. We finished the phase one trial in London in 2008, and in the US, we are currently in phase two, testing for both male and fe female adult hair loss. The way we're doing this study is through a series of small studies that have 20, 30 or 40 people. Now we're up to 235 people going to around 300. And we do not have any final data, only early interim data. But it's very encouraging and I wanted to share it with you. I think we talked about the promise of it and even though it's not here today, it's good to see what will be available in the future. So in our study, we take men with balding spots at the back or ladies with hair loss here in the front. We grow their cells in the lab. We inject the cells into these balding areas. We then put a tattoo here so we know exactly where we injected the cells. Here you can see the tattoo in the corner on the right where we injected the cells. Now look at each of these photos. You can see the circle on the bottom there and the bottom here. So you see, after three months, 12 weeks, we see more and more people growing this hair. Same thing here. If you look on the left side, before, three months later, 12 weeks, we see more hair. If we magnify like this, we can see the increase in hair. There, if we look at the dark hairs, in medicine we call them terminal hairs, the thick ones, we have an 80% increase in this subject of dark terminal hairs. Now, in our phase one trial, we set as a bar for the limit for the response in 13 or more hairs per square centimeter. In the first phase in the UK, we only saw about 30% of subjects get this. But now, as we go into phase two, we are going up to 50 to 60%. We inject at the beginning and here, 52 weeks later, one year later, you see we still have 40 to 50% of the people with more than 13 hairs per square centimeter. As we do more of these studies, we see more data coming in. We're getting higher and higher. 60 to 70% of the people are now showing this response of 13 or more hairs. Why 13? Because in studies with finasteride, minoxidil, drugs approved to treat hair loss, that's the type of number they see to get approval. The last thing I'll show you is one last picture. Here's somebody at the beginning. You see this tattoo in the middle to mark the spot. And here we are one year later, where we have an increase of 54% of the dark terminal important hairs. So this is where we are in this research. The biologic concept and the safety of this approach have been proven nicely in phase one. Now we're in phase two and on our way to 300 subjects. If we're successful, then we must do phase three, go to the regulatory agency and ask for approval to use in the clinic. 
But I think cell-based transplantation, because it enables us to magnify or multiply the hairs that we could make, will expand greatly the number of people who will find hair transplantation on a cellular level to be useful for them, more than currently find the surgery that we can do useful. We have a website at aransresearch.com if you want more information.